All in audio experience. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's all in audio experience. My name is Jordan. I'm here with my boy. Trent is in the building. And guess what? We got a good episode for you all. We going to get into that fantasy football, baby. I know a lot of our uh, our lady friends out there, they hate to hear us coming with this season. But uh, hey. <laughs> you got to get step aside. Step aside. It's that time of year. I'm excited, bro. Uh, you know, fantasy football is just fun, man. Like, I feel like it's the best fantasy out of all the sports, basketball, baseball, football. I feel like everybody likes football fantasy, even if you're not, like, a big football fan. So, Thanks. I, um, have you done those before, like, basketball and football? Basketball sucks. Um, it's got a weird format because of the way, like, basketball is. You have, like, two or three games a week. So, like, you might have a player play – and you done you not like it's hard to catch a game because they got hella games. Uh, you might have a player play, and it's like an average. It's like you get points from every game they play this week. They might sit out one game that week. It's mm-hmm. a weird. It's weird. It's just a weird sport to do it. Baseball fantasy was like the classic fantasy though. I never played baseball fantasy, but that was like used to be the most popular one. And then I feel like football took over. Okay, dang. Yeah. Maybe that would help me get back into baseball if I tried it. But that's a lot of games too. That's. Yeah, it's like 160 or something like that. Yeah. So I just like baseball for the drip. They be clean out there. That is true. Yeah. That is true. There's this one guy. I'm going to just say this real quick. He just went to the Yankees or something. Oh, what's that What's that dude's name? But he be dripped out, man. I'm like, clean. I don't know his name either. Don't know what he be doing. But I saw he had like four home runs in his first three games or something like that. Oh, dang. Yeah, he was going crazy when he first got there. I don't know his name. But, yeah, he'd be clean. And baseball has the best hats. It's, it keeps their jerseys classic because that's the one thing I hate about football. Mm. Football changes their jerseys too much, bro. That's true. Yeah. Basketball kind of be doing that too sometimes. The old jerseys be looking better than the new ones. They be the coldest ones. Like when somebody put on a throwback, you like, like, even some of the basic stuff, like a Lions throwback, like, it ain't got but two colors, but it's just something about it. Simplicity is, like, the best way to go. I remember, like, the um, Texans bring out the Oilers jerseys or something like that. That'd be cold. Yeah. Oh. Texans, Titans, Green I, Bay. I mean, there's a whole bunch of classic jerseys out there, but, hey. Football got to work on their hats, too. Football is not great with hats. I don't know if it's like the the logos or what, but they got the worst hats. Even even if you were like to buy a jersey, they wouldn't be the top of my list either. Like you know, I would go with like hockey, baseball. Baseball's been cold with it, bro. Yeah. Baseball jerseys, is, yeah, yeah. Basketball jerseys are hit or miss. Yeah. Yeah, they're hit or miss. But, like, when you rock one you really like, whether you put the white shirt under or you just go straight on, it could be cold. It could, it could look good for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then you got soccer or, you know, football, soccer. international football. That's that's top three that day. So, yeah. But all right, man, let's get to it. Let's get to it. I want you to go first, man. Give me, give me, a, give me a hot take, Trent, real quick, man. So we didn't even explain it. So basically, we both got 10 players that we are looking at. We got the monitor on for this upcoming fantasy season that we feel strongly about. And that can either be good or bad. And we're going to give our take on how the season is going to go for that player. Um, And we'll come back mid-season or maybe at the end of the season. And we'll just see how our takes are aging. We'll come back mid-season and see how our takes are aging. You know what I'm saying? So this is just going to be a hot take on a player we feel strongly about. And um, good or bad, we'll see see if it comes true. So go ahead, get us started, man. All right, man. So, look, my first pick is going to be Kyron Williams. And this is what I got to say. Uh, I feel like he's about to be on a Austin Eckler run for the oh. next few years. I like his playing style. I feel like theirs is very similar. Um, and Matt Stafford, and you got two great receivers, well, and a pretty good number three guy. So it's going to be hard to defend them. So I feel like 
Kyron is going to be good. My only question is Blake Corum coming in. How would that affect things? That's my only question, but I feel like he's he can be on the Austin Eckler run for a few years if everything goes perfect. Okay. All right, I can't push back on that yet. You know, I wanted to I wanted to come at you say you're wrong, but no, I can actually see that. Uh they actually added some offensive linemen, some guards this offseason and paid a few guys. Um, and they just gonna have more consistency with Cooper Cup coming back on the offense. And as long as Matthew Stafford stays healthy, the offense is gonna be good. And I feel like when you have a good offense, that just sets you up to have a good fantasy year. So uh Kyra Williams, I can for sure see an Austin Eckler type run, thousand yards, seven hundred receiving yards type of season. With a lot of touchdowns. Um, nah, that's a good, that's a good little, you know what I'm saying, entry take. He, yeah, he, man. he dipping his toe in the water. He dipping his toe in the water a little bit. He ain't coming too high yet. Not too high. But I'm gonna come hot on the next one. Okay, okay. Well, you know me. You know me. I gotta get I gotta get in here real, real fast, man. Tyreek Hill is washed. I'm sorry. I'm good. I'm not gonna say he's washed. I'm not gonna say he's oh uh, no, nah, he's washed. He's washed. He's washed. This will be the year we look back and be like Tyreek Hill has fallen off. Tyreek Hill has fallen off. Why? For one, he's about to turn 30. Two, he has had been in the headlines all offseason. You're like, Jordan, what's that have to do with football, bro? When you got all that going on. When you got all that going on in your personal life, it definitely bleeds into two on the field. Look at Damian Lillard last year in the NBA. And mm-hmm. three, the Dolphins have loaded up on the skill group. Jalen Waddle is there. They got Devin A. Chain. They just drafted another running back. Tua just got paid, bro. This is the year that Tyreek Hill takes a step back and Jalen Waddle takes a step forward. And I'm going to even say he becomes the number one guy in Miami. Watch it, don't you be like, bro? He just had 17 yards last year. Yada yada yada. Watch this is the year that Tyreek Hill takes a step back and Jalen Waddle and the rest of the guys take a step forward. Okay, so wait, when you say that, are you saying he's not getting a thousand yards this year? If that's what you're saying, or um, that's why when I say watch, I wanted to get my take off and make sure I came, came crazy with the headline. I think he can get to a thousand yards, but this is the year that. When we look back at his career, he reached the peak last year, almost got to 2,000 receiving yards. And then the next year, they were like, that wasn't the same Tyreek Hill anymore. Mm-hmm. He was officially on the decline. This is officially what, what Max Kellerman say about um, Tom Brady. Uh, he's falling off the cliff. This he's is him. He's about to start declining off that cliff. And I think it'll be faster than people expect only because he's a small guy who relies a lot on speed. I think once that extra gear, because there's so many fast guys in the league, once you lose like a, that little bit of edge you got, and you, you know you know the difference in like that guy having that one more step than you is so much like – it's such a big factor on the field because it's really the difference in them getting the tackle almost every time. You know what I'm saying? That that one extra gear that you don't got no more. So I'm I'm standing on this. Tyree Kills fall off here is here. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> that's a wild peak. Wow, crazy. Yes, uh, very bold. Very bold. Go ahead, go ahead. Tell me, tell me how you really feel. I'm going to say you got guys like Devontae that's over 30, still playing at a high level. And Tyreek Hill's gear is like two above anybody else. So if he come down one, he's still a monster. Um, I don't like the take, man. I (laughs) I can see all your face. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. No, that's respectful. That's why I'm like. If I'm wrong about it, I'm wrong about it. But I'm standing on this one. Uh, my only pushback on that would be Devontae Hill is a a finesse receiver. He uses the route tree a lot. He uses your weight against you. You know what I'm saying? He's also bigger, uses his length. Tyreek Hill, if he loses the speed, it's not like he's going to be able to jump over you. It's not like he's going to be able to – he's not like he has a big-arm quarterback that's going to be able to throw him open. So – we shall see. We shall see. It's a hot one. I had to jump. I had to jump out there. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. that's probably my craziest one. I'm not gonna lie. That's probably my craziest one. 
Okay, all right. That that's a crazy. Right. I I like that though. That's good. All right. So I'm gonna go my next guy. QB for the Saints. Spencer okay. Rattler is going to take over and he's gonna make a huge impact on the Saints. Um Derek Carr, he's been pretty trash for a few years now. Um, it's only a matter of time before somebody takes over, and I think it's going to be Spencer Rattler. And I think let's I'm going to say week six, he's going to come in, and he's never going to let go of the reins. I wish I had this take, but <laughs> I got to push back a little bit. I got to push back a little bit. I don't want to because you know how I feel about Derek Carr. I think I could get um, – Get us a sparkling quarterback that can that can do his job. <laughs> my only pushback is Spencer Rattler in college got his job taken by Caleb Williams. It's not like he got it taken by a scrub. He went to South Carolina and he was good, not great. Um, I feel you though because you can see it when you're watching him. You see the arm talent. You mm-hmm. see stuff that could work, but like, has he completely sold me? No. And if he does work, I just feel like it might take a year or two. So that's the only thing pushing me back from hopping on the train this year is that if it does work, I feel like it might be like in his second or third year. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing I feel like, you know, he's an older guy, you know, he stayed longer. And um, I feel like losing the job was a, a tough thing to go through. And that's like a, a stepping stone, like when Jalen Hurts got benched. Luckily, Jalen Hurts went to an offense in Lincoln Riley that was able to, you know, make him better, and he had a lot of surrounding pieces. Spencer Rattler goes to South Carolina where, you know, they're like middle of the road SEC. You know, they, they can compete with any team in the country. But they they middle of the road, yeah, they pretty <laughs> – <laughs> they are very average. Uh, so I think all of those situations, losing his job, um, being older, and uh, going to a program that doesn't have the talent that other elite programs have, give him an, an opportunity to go into the league and be great. And um, also Derek Carr being trash. And uh, he'll get an opportunity to sit behind a guy that is experienced but that's not great. That's going to help him come along. So I think this first year is going to happen. It's going to happen. Man. All right. So one question, and then we can go to the next one. In regards to fantasy, what are your expectations? Of? Are you drafting Sensor Rattler? Is he a drafting stash? Is he like a pickup off waivers later in the season? What do you actually expect? Pick up off waivers. I'm not going to waste a pick on him. In the draft, I'm not going to waste a pick on him in the draft, but I think later on we can see him be somebody that people are picking up in the waivers and can be a potentially a league winner. No lie. Bro. League winner. All right. All right. All right. All right. Not about that one, but all right. All right. <laughs> That's a little wild, but even saying it was kind of rough. But I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with it. <laughs> stick with it. Stick with it. All right, man. All right. My next one is the one I added in since we last talked. Um, I I took off um Lad McConkey, uh, Georgia receiver. Uh, I actually still think he's like a, a a dope receiver that is gonna be successful in the league. Um, he got drafted to the Chargers, and I took him off because Justin Herbert got injured. Um. Dang. I think it was a ankle injury. I can't remember, but he got injured, and they're expecting him to be in a boot for two weeks. And so um, after that, I guess he can get out the boot. I don't know. But, you know, Justin, Herber- Justin Herbert's had a lot of injuries. And that class, that draft class with him, Tua, um, Joe Burrow, they stay getting injured. I don't know what's up with them. But that made me kind of um, put Lad McConkey on the back burner as far as fantasy this year. And instead, I'm going with Romeo Dobbs, your boy. Uh, Romeo has been killing it in camp again. Uh, he's 6'2", 200 pounds. 
He can play inside the slot. He's big enough to play outside the slot. Jordan Love is coming into his own this year. I think Romeo Dobbs is prime for a breakout year, man. Mm. I think he can be a thousand yard receiver, eight, ten touchdown type of guy. And I don't think he's gonna go that high. Nobody's drafting him in the, like the third round or nothing like that. You grab Romeo Dobbs and he becomes Jordan Love's guy because he is gonna be competitive because they got got a couple of other guys on the roster that could be that guy. But if he becomes that guy for Jordan Love, you're looking at a number one receiver that you're stealing in the mid rounds. You know what I'm saying? So Romeo Dobbs going out on a limb. He is a value pick this year. I think he – I'm not going to say he's going to win you the league, but he's going to be a, a, a number two receiver on your fantasy roster that you got for the cheap. You know what I'm saying? So, Romeo Dobbs, that's my pick. Got you. Hey, that is – I like Romeo Dobbs. And you've known that, you know, in the past I didn't have him. He's helped every now and then. He, he has some games where it's like, dang. Why doesn't he do this every week? That's my only issue with Romeo Dobbs. We know Christian Watkins, he like, or Watson, whatever his last name is, he is injured all the time. He not consistent either. So that's going to allow me to roll into my next pick, which is. <laughs> I like the pivot. I like the pivot. <laughs> Go ahead. My number three guy is Jaden Reed. We okay. saw last year Jaden Reed go crazy multiple times. He's a gadget guy. He's a guy that gets open. He gets the ball in space. He gets um, end around plays. He does it all. And that's why I say he's going to be the guy to get in Green Bay. Jaden okay. Reed is the guy. This year. A little smoke we got going. All right. We're going to see who, who guy wins out. He has the the Debo effect. I feel like um, he can do it all, man. So that's the guy I'm going with. And Romeo, I'm going to say this: Romeo is going to be average again this year. Average is crazy. <laughs> average is crazy. Yeah, we got to see about this one. We got to see about this one. Uh, one more guy to pick, uh, put up in there because they got a lot of weapons in Green Bay. Low key, uh, Dontavian Wicks looked pretty good in a couple games last year too. So. It's, it's going to be a competition to see who becomes that guy. I think they got like a, a tight end too. And then they got Josh Jacobs. So, I mean, Green Bay, we might have to be talking about them in like a, a deep playoff run. They yeah. uh they put out them Cowboys last year. So, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, they got all the talent. It's like a lot of young talent right now. Like between the Texans and the Packers, it's like they got all this young talent, a uh, blooming quarterback. This is going to be a bright future for both teams. I'm going to go for them. All righty, all righty. So the next one I'm about to go with, man, cue up the band. Roll, tie, roll, baby. Uh -oh. Don't give a piss about nothing but the top. I'm going with King Henry. Okay. Yes, sir. Derrick Henry is still the king, bro. He is still the king. Uh, last year, he did not have a good offensive line, still put up 1,000 yards. He's still in shape. He still looks good. And he's playing with Lamar Jackson. Derrick Henry is going for 1,500 plus yards this year. The boy still got it. He still got it. And he putting up 10 plus touchdowns. Derrick Henry is my pick to be a top five running back. I got Derrick Henry. Okay. He going to go for 2,000? No. No. <laughs> so, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think this is the perfect match. I like this. Um, this tape. They've been trying to do this with like two guys with Romeo, not Romeo, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. Derrick Henry is like all that in one. He got the speed. He got the power. Um, he can take it in on the goal line. He can do whatever. So. I like that pick. I have no pushback. Zero pushback on okay. that at all. It's he liked that roll tie. I knew I was gonna get you with that one. You like you couldn't go against that one. Yeah, Liz, yeah. He, he, yes, sir. Right. What you got for me? All right. Um I'm gonna stick with the Packers here. Jordan Love is that guy. Yeah. And this year he will finish with some of the elite guys 
in fantasy football. He is a second round guy. Now I feel like you'll be able to steal him. I feel like nobody's gonna get him in the second round, but I feel like you're gonna be able to steal him later, and he's going to be your starter for the rest of the year and gonna go crazy. So I like Jordan Love. That's my number four. And uh he could finish top ten, top five fantasy quarterbacks. Uh, that's a good take. That's a good take. Um I'm big on Jordan Love too. Last year he looked good. Um I think he's gonna be competing with those young guys for the um that that next tier of the best QBs in the league. I think at the top we got the Pats, the Lamars, the Josh Allen's. Uh, I got him right there with CJ as far as talent, man. And I, you know how how I feel about CJ. I think he's he's fire. So I'm with you on that one. I think he's gonna be putting up numbers. Yes, sir. And then you know the offense with um, Matt Lafleur. I mean, he knows how to dial it up. So I think Jordan is gonna have a great year. So for sure, he got a great name too, man. Blessed, <laughs> blessed. Um, let me get into a QB take too then, man, because I kind of feel like this is the year of the QBs. I think there's a lot of good QBs this year. Like the ones I just mentioned, plus Kyler Murray's back. They got him a receiver. They got Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff, I think can put up some good numbers. They're like good options if you wait to get a quarterback. Um, Kirk Cousins put some numbers. Dak put some numbers. For fantasy-wise, I feel like it's a good year for QBs. Um, the guy I'm going with, and I'm not going to lie, if he don't do it, I'm done with him after this year. I'm done. Burning the boats, not doing it no more. He's got to take. Justin Fields has got to steal this job from Russell Wilson within like the first four weeks. You, at this point of your career, should be better than Russell Wilson. Am I tripping? Russell Wilson. No. <sighs> Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, Russell Wilson's a great QB, but he's not the best version of him. I think Justin Fields should be able to take this job from Russell Wilson. The Steelers have a really good team. They made the playoffs last year with Kenny Pickett's trash ass. So they have a line. They have running backs. They have George Pickens. They have Pat Fryermuth, and they have a great defense. Justin Fields should be able to do numbers in this, um, in this system. He put up 1,000 yards with the Chicago Bears. Uh, on running the ball. Only Michael Vick, Lamar Jackson, and Justin Fields have put up a 1,000 yards in a season at quarterback. Mm -hmm. Great company to be. So Justin Fields should take this take this uh, starting position and run away with it. And if he does, we're looking at potentially another top five, top ten quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's my uh, that's my hot take. Justin, man, make me right about you, bro. I've been, I've been holding on, but I'm not, I'm not giving you no, no excuses no more. Yeah, yeah, he heard me last year, bro. I picked him up. I don't know. I feel like I picked him up a little early, thinking he'd take off with DJ Moore. Um, I understand their offensive coordinator and all that stuff, and they didn't really believe in the guy, no O-line. So I like this take, and I do believe in Justin Fields. Um. I'm gonna say I don't. I don't think he's gonna take the job though. Okay. I don't think he'll take early. It might be mid season. You say you believe in him though. So okay. So you said not early, but is it a make or break? Like if he if, if we get to the end of the year and it's still like it still hasn't happened yet. It still hasn't popped. Are you are you good on him? Are you still like maybe next year? So what is his contract situation like? Did they? Is he on his last? I think, he has two, I think he has two years left. Okay, so I don't think it's make or break. I think Russell is about out of the door. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I feel like if he sits behind him all year, which I don't think will happen, he'll be good and ready to go next year. I'm not ready to pull the trigger on him being the starter. The starter early this with the Steelers, but I don't know. I understand it from a development point of view. My only thing is, like, if you're that guy and you're that talented, if you're the guy, you had three years in Chicago, one year, and you're coming into this fourth year with the Steelers, I just feel like you should be able to take the job 
if it's not early for midseason, you should be able to take the job from a 35-year-old Russell Wilson who can't run anymore and does kind of the, they have a similar game in a sense of like their deep ball quarterbacks. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like you should be able to take the job. You know what I'm saying? If you are in that CJ, maybe not Pat in Lamar realm, but at least in that CJ and Jordan Love realm. You know what I'm saying? I feel like at this point you should be able to take the job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got a hard time putting them in the CJ. I mean, well, you saying talent wise, CJ and yeah. Jordan, yeah. yeah. If he pops, if he pops, wouldn't we expect him to be there? I don't expect him to be Dak. If he's if he's starting and he's good enough, you expect him to be Jared Goff or Dak Prescott? I don't I don't see him going like we're gonna be like, man, he's just as good as CJ and Jordan. Okay. I don't see that. But I feel like maybe I don't know, maybe next year. Maybe. You're saying you're saying style wise, no, he's not Jared Goff or Dak, but impact wise, that'll be about where he's probably at. The the Kurtz, the Dax and the Jared Goffs. Like he's more of a runner, of course, but like if he's able to be a starter, it's probably going to be that level of impact. He's probably not going to be up there with the other guys. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be just this year complete like game changer. And it depends on how they use him. Now, if they use him like that year when he was going crazy and went for a thousand, and they actually utilize his running ability, ability, and not like over try to change him, like keep him in that Lamar realm, like use his running, then, yeah, he can make that impact. But don't try to make him into one of those other guys because he's not one of those guys. C.J. Stroud and Jordan Love can sit in the pocket and dime you up all day. Yeah, yeah, no, he ain't going to do that. Yeah, yeah no. All right, give me another one. All right, let's see. So I'm going to go – to the Bengals here, and I'm going to go with Chase Brown as my guy that is going to be like a Kyron Williams this year. I know we got Zach Moss, but, this but I think Chase Brown is going to take the spot, and he's going to make a huge impact and going to be a league winner in the running back position this year that – some people might not see coming. That's what I'm saying. I don't agree with this one. Um, I think <laughs> I don't agree with this one only because they're different running backs, and it just looks like the perfect running back um, duo as far as, like, splitting carries. Uh, Zach Moss is, like, a, a five-yard, like, a four-yard type of – get you those those five hard five yards that you need can block a little bit and then chase feels like the more explosive like third down back or whatever i just feel like they'll end up splitting carries and chase will be good flex option on a on a week that you need them and don't have no options and like potentially he might go off or something i just i don't see him being a league winner necessarily that would be my pushback okay because I think Zach Moss has shown he can handle 20 carries a game and give you good production after what he did with the Colts last year when Jonathan Taylor was up. Oh, yeah. I mean, I definitely am like – I'm taking the leap of faith with this, but uh, I'm I'm just going to go with it, man. I don't know if it's actually going to work, but I just feel like he's in a position where Joe Mixon is out the door. So, he's been in the offense. He should be able to – Make some work, you know. Make some work with it, man. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Staying on the Bengals, though. Staying on quarterbacks as well. You know I've had my feelings about Joseph Burrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't like the haircut. Don't like his wrist. He's got flimsy, he's got flimsy wrists right now. He's got flimsy wrist work. I don't like it. Um, Driving and blonde hair. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Actually, I'm not hating on the hair. He actually, I think, cut it because um, somebody was like a cancer patient and he was cutting it for them. So actually, shout out to Joe Burrow. I'm not hating on the hair. It's actually dope. Um, just trying to get this take off. I don't hate Joe Burrow right now as far as winning football. But 
purely fantasy, I'm not on the Joe Burrow train. Um, he's going to start the season coming off injuries. T. Higgins got franchise tag. They didn't pay him. Um, that's not a good way to motivate somebody that you're trying to make a Super Bowl run with, run with. And it's not the type of thing. Like, you don't pay me. I might still want to win for the team. But, like, I'm going to be a lot less worried about what I'm doing in the regular season because I'm trying to protect my body and get this money. Uh, Jamar Chase is sitting out right now for a contract extension. They just lost Joe Mixon. Um, I just think this is not setting up for a good fantasy year for Joe Burrow. The last couple of years, he's battled injuries. It wasn't great if you drafted him high. Uh, I just think there's better options at quarterback from all the guys like we've, we've talked about so far. Don't don't love him as far as fantasy and putting up numbers on a week-to-week basis. I think he's going to have more of the uh, doing what needs to be done to get wins and get them in the playoffs or a playoff run type of year as opposed to a big number fantasy year. So I'm out on Joe Burrow. Gotcha. Um. I, I like this take because, I mean, I feel like Joe Burrow, he's not that much of a, a talent as some of these other guys. I mean, he's great with accuracy, stuff like that. But he just doesn't have all the other abilities that some of the other guys like Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar, and all these guys have. So, I've always been, like, as a fantasy option, he's not yeah. going to be in my top five, you know. There's other guys. I mean, he might not even be in my top ten. He might be on the edge just because there's so many elite guys that can do it in so many different ways. So I like this take. Um, and he got to stay on the field too, man. Um, that's always a big question. Yeah. Yeah, I think he – and the reason I felt the need to say it because he kind of falls in that Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers zone of they're such good players that you'll see somebody take them high in the fantasy draft and you're looking like, well, why you want him that bad? He, he, he Yeah, he's going to win the game, but, like, the numbers never are, like, crazy as far as fantasy. So, yep, I think we can agree on that one pretty easy. Yep. All right. Now, let me go with another take, man. Curtis Samuel in Buffalo. I'm not going to say anything. We got a situation where we got a rookie coming in, and we got Curtis Samuel, who is a vet, that's been here and done that. He'll be with an elite quarterback, and I don't know the OC, but Curtis Samuel has the potential to have a crazy year like Cole Beasley did back in the day. Because they kind of have that same playing style. So, he is a sleeper pick for me. He's not a league winner necessarily. But um, he's going to be one of those guys that you can pick up late. And he will be a great flex option for you. I want to be like, who the fuck is Curtis Samuel? Like, you like Curtis. You like, this is one of your sleeper picks that I'll be like, bro. I'll be sure uh, he's just not. I'm. I'm. He's just not on my radar enough to care about Curtis Samuel. But yeah, I, I feel like if you get a couple wins because you snuck him into the lineup, or he had a hot four week stretch, sure. I just feel like he had a good like four or five week run for you like three years ago, and you still living on that dream of him doing it again. <laughs> That's what it feels like. I'm not hating on the pick. Uh, he could definitely work as a sleeper pick. Um, he's just not on my radar enough to really radar. Damn, with yeah. no receivers in sight in Buffalo, he not on your radar, man. Who is the other? Who um, the other? so they have um, how do you say his name? It's like Kai. It starts with a K. Um, he was a slot receiver last year. Last name start with an S or something, right? Yeah, something like that. And then they drafted the uh, Keon Coleman this year, first round, who I think are going to be their one and two. And so he could come in as a gadget guy, a uh, H-back slash slot. Um, and I'm not saying that won't work. I'm not saying that won't work. I think he could end up being the fourth option, though, fourth or fifth, op- fourth or fifth option because they have James Cook, who's a receiving back, and then they have the tight end. 
uh, I think his name Dalton Kincaid or something. Yeah. So, I'm um, I'm. Um, I know I just buried your guy. I, I, I don't know. He could. He could. I'm not sold on it. Him being a major, a major piece. I respect. Though. I respect no. it because he's never really. He hasn't shown enough. Yeah. You know, but I'm just going off on a, a limb here because of the situation he's in. Um, he should be the most experienced. He should be. Should be able to make some noise, but we'll see. Okay. All right. That was a sleepy pick. That was a sleepy pick. <laughs> Let me turn this back up, man. Let me turn this back up. Uh, Caleb Williams is about to have the best rookie fantasy year of all time. Mm. Caleb Williams has Roma Dooms. He has Keenan Allen. He has DJ Moore. Uh, they got him. DeAndre Swift in the backfield. The boy is the boy is nice. He got a strong arm. He got, he's athletic, and he got the attitude to come out there and start slinging it. I don't know if he's going to be a legend, this, that, and the other, but I get the feeling that he's going to be Ja Morant first year. He's going to be out there dunking on niggas, and he's going to be out there putting up numbers. I think he's going to be a great fantasy pickup off the bat. Man, there's no way I can go against this. <laughs> Oh God! So many elite players around him, and uh, man, he's been great since he touched the field at, at Oklahoma, taking uh, Spencer Rattler's spot. I'm gonna give you a place to push back on, though. I think he's gonna be the greatest fantasy rookie year all time. Better than Cam's year when he went for 4,000 yards. Better than Andrew Lux. Better than C.J. Stroud last year. How do you feel about that take? Because I think he's going to put up 4,000 yards, 30-plus touchdowns. I can't go against it, bro. If he, <laughs> he has probably the most talent out of all of those guys as far as, like, his surrounding pieces. If he doesn't, you know, show up, I'm going to be real concerned. That's my thing. Like, there's no reason he shouldn't be elite. That's yeah. my take on it. And if he's anything other than that, I'm scratching my head, you know, like bust. Who, who, lied, who lied to me? Yeah. Sorry, I lied to Martin. Exactly. He's going to be – if he doesn't – Show up like crazy, he's going to be a bust in this league. I mean, there's no reason he shouldn't be great, man. That's my thought. All right. All right. All right. Give me your next one. All right, man. So, look. The target monster, Deontay Johnson. He's getting the opportunity to go somewhere where he can be the number one guy. And I think he's going to fall off. You twist it. <laughs> That's not what I, you were gonna say. I was hype. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, my boy Bryce getting the one." What the fuck? <laughs> All right, explain, bro. I think um, as much as I want him to be great, I don't know if Bryce is going to be great. Man, so, is this about Deontay or Bryce? This is about Bryce. Okay. Uh, I'm hurt, uh, man. I want him to be elite, but I just don't know if he's that dude. And I think so small, bro. He was so small. And he's not Kyler Murray small, where he's built. He's he Trent Malone small. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not athletic. Like Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray be moving, and his arm looks better too. It just don't look good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's why. I think uh, Deontay, I don't think he'll be, you know, like a guy that falls off as far as his athleticism and being able to get open. But I just don't think that Bryce has the tools to allow Deontay Johnson to be great. And I hope I'm wrong. But that's 
Because I want to disagree, but I can't lie. I get that feeling when I look at them. I'm like, there's not a lot of worlds where I see this working. Yeah. Like even Drew Brees and Russell Wilson look bigger than him. Exactly. He's just – he's so small, bro. Um, I don't want to be another person counting him out, but that's just how I feel right now. So I hope he can prove us wrong this year. This is – he still doesn't have elite talent necessarily around him, but he has a lot better talent with Deontay Johnson. Thielen is still going to be pretty solid. Um, I feel like they had somebody else too, but – Yeah. Um... He built like a uh, country boy. He built like DK Metcalf. Yeah, yeah. So he has that talent, but yeah, I'm I'm just not sure yet. So that's my pushback. That got so sad so quick. I was, <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, my boy. And I want to push back, but I got like my in my my gut is telling me you're right. Something ain't right. Something don't smell right. Something don't smell right. Um. Yeah, that's about it. Some don't smell right, and it it doesn't help that Bryce struggles to get the ball over the middle of the field, and it just feels like Deontay the where where Deontay wants to catch the ball at is not going to be a place where it's going to be easy for Bryce to get the ball. I think the the Z, Xavier Leggett dude might have better because a uh, better connection with Bryce because he can get the jump balls. Bryce can throw it up and he can come down with it, but that's not Deontay's game. Deontay's getting in and out of the. Um, you know, he's he's trying to get to your hips, get out of his breaks, and, like, you know, find, like, little soft areas in the defense and catch it. Yep. Uh, Bryce can't see over the offensive line. So. Damn, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, all right. No world title on that one. <laughs> all right, so my next one, this one's a layup. This one's a layup. Uh, Garrett Wilson, it is finally time, brother. It is finally time. Um, me and you have both been waiting for this for a long time. The Jets have had a good defense. They've had weapons. They just have not had a quarterback. And last year when we thought they had a quarterback, first play of the uh, game, damn near, Achilles torn. And Xavier uh, or Garrett Wilson had to go through a whole nother season of scrubs. So please. Please, please, no, nothing happened, bro. Gary Wilson is is your breakout year. I'm going 1,400 yards, 12 touchdowns, 80-plus catches. Mm. Go ahead, Gary Wilson, breakout year. He's that dude. He's been that dude, and it's finally time for him to get his shine. He's earned it. Let's go. Ah. Uh. I believe in Garrett Wilson. Don't break my heart, man. I don't believe in Aaron Rodgers. After last year getting injured, I don't know if he's going to make it through the full season, bro. I don't believe in him being able to stay healthy at 40. Well, let me see. At 40 years old, tearing your Achilles last year, smoking ganja in the offseason, you know. <laughs> Rooms, whatever he doing out here. Doing that shit for so. <laughs> so I'm looking at the uh depth chart. They got Tyrod next. They got Jordan Travis, who also came off a uh, injury. Yeah. No, so I don't I'm believe so in Rodgers getting through the whole season. And I believe that will impact Garrett once again. And I I don't know if he'll be able to make it to 14, bro. <laughs> All right, bro. Before I address your valid points, um, why is Jordan Travis on the roster? I'm taking my name away from him. <laughs> that nigga's not good. I'm just surprised he's in the league. But um, I get the feeling, too. Um, and that's probably why I'm just so ready for him to have one good season. I don't care if they make the playoffs, if they – make all those expectations come true. I just want to see this man have a good year. Yeah. I feel like I it. But Aaron Rodgers, you know me, for years I was such an Aaron Rodgers guy, but these last three, four years have just completely derailed my faith in Aaron Rodgers. 
just being able to lead a team because he's just so out there. Like, uh, he was with, like, Robert Kennedy, the Kennedy family, talking about politics throughout the year. I don't want my football players in politics. Shut up and dribble. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, cry. <laughs> but, like, no, bro, I don't know, bro. I just, I just really, really hope. He he's not on that. Uh, he's he's focused, man. Because I don't think New York fan base, New Jersey, New York, wherever the Jets is like fan base is at. I don't think they're gonna be tolerating him playing, man. Yeah. I think they. So we'll see. <sighs> so, um, Garrett Wilson, I feel like it might waste away. Like, um, well, Amari was still elite early on in his career, but, you know, he's going to have to find another spot possibly to really blossom and win games how he needs to. Talking about Garrett? Yeah, Garrett. Um, he going to get paid. He gonna, he's going to be solid for sure. But to get to those elite numbers, he might not end up with the Jets – Four or five years from hey, he just done with his being drafted spot, so it's just curse. The his 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 the best years of his career are not gonna be here. Yep, and uh, that allows me to segue into that guy, Amari Cooper. Uh, I think he's going to be elite again, and I think the Browns will be elite, and I think Deshaun. Is going to be back this year also. So I'm mashing. Oh, <laughs> that's it. He's stacking. All right. All right. Um, you know me. You know me. Don't give a piss about nothing but the tie, baby. You know me. But I cannot agree with you on this one. I think Le Amari is doomed to be an elite technical receiver who, like, if you turn the film on, you give it a 90 film grade. You give him 89 field grades. But for whatever reason, he hasn't consistently been able to be with a quarterback that can get him to the the 1,500-yard seasons or whatever. Yeah. I think it's going to be another one of those years of, like, he's going to look great on film. He's going to be cooking dudes. I don't think Deshaun Watson's shoulder is going to hold up. Um, I don't know, Massage Boy, he, he got the stank on him, bro. I think he messed up his career. Whatever he wasn't doing, apparently he was doing because he ain't looked right since then. And I'm not a believer. Something something don't smell right. Um, and I want him to because, you know, I like Deshaun's game. And I hope Deshaun can come back and be at least 80% of what he used to be because I think that'll get Amari – at least to like that 1,200, 10 touchdown area. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not sold. I think it's another 1,000-yard, eight touchdown year for Amari, which is good. You know what I'm saying? But um, uh, I don't know. Some some may right, some may right with uh, Deshaun's shoulder because he don't look like the same player. Yeah, he doesn't. Uh, and that's a, if he is 80% of his uh, – um, it's the same thing with the Jets, you know. It's like if Aaron Rodgers is 80% of himself, if Deshaun is 80% of himself, they can go to the playoffs. They can do well. If not, I mean, it's going to be big questions. But I believe that um, Deshaun will get back on track. I'm not saying he's going to be Texans Deshaun, but I think he's going to be back on track. And Amari is going to go for more than what he went for last year or around that 1,200 Um receiving yards and more touchdowns than five this year. Hey, man, make massages great again, bro. Let's, let's, <laughs> boy, hey, he need one for the one time, bro. Let, let's get that man on the table, bro, so he can get his juice, bro. He, he need just one, bro. Just get him one. <laughs> one. <laughs> bro, somebody take one for the team. Shorty, come on over here. Uh, but, yeah, you know I still love Amari. I think he'll have a good year for sure. Um, That explosive – that explosive year, not sold on it though. That yeah. So I think you'll have another Amari year. All right, my next one. My next one is hey, this one's a layup. I think Saquon Barkley is about to have a career year. Mm -hmm. I think uh he went to a team that has one of the best offensive lines in the league in the Eagles. He's got a quarterback back there, much like the Lamar Derrick Henry situation, Jalen 
Saquon, I feel like you get real creative with options, screens, all that. You got two dogs on the outside in Devontae Smith and AJ. Um, why not, bro? Like, it, whatever the numbers are, Saquon Barkley should be going first round. Um, as long as he's healthy, bro, I'm almost positive he's going to have a great year. Yep. I love it, man. I can't push it back at all. Um, this is a beautiful situation, like you said. The Ravens doing, getting that elite guy to go with their um, dual threat quarterbacks. Like, another match in heaven for the Eagles. Like, now my only concern is just, you know, his health as always. And uh, the way the Eagles ended last year, you know, I'm hoping they get back on track. You know, they dropped, what, I don't know, six of the last seven games or something crazy last year. So, um, just hoping they get back on track. Um, I think the bigger story is the Giants just, like, what, like, they just handled the situation so poorly to me, bro. You pay Daniel Jones, a player who's just, like, objectively not good. Trash. A player that was carrying your offense that hadn't drafted right at receiver for, like, five years in a row since Odell Beckham Jr., the one player carrying your offense you don't pay, you're like – the the Eagles end up giving him, like, 13 mil a year. That was $2 million more than what y'all had him on his last contract. Y'all didn't want to pay him. I don't know, bro. I just don't – I don't understand. That. And then y'all replace him with Devin Singletary when there was Josh Jacobs on the market. There was all types of guys on the market. So – but yeah, the Giants, we ain't giving them no, we ain't giving them no screen time, bro. Next. Yeah. Yeah, they they suck and they're retarded. <laughs> you can't say that anymore, bro. My bad, bro. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> I'm gonna say, yep, ass. Okay, all right. Let me jump away real quick. Uh let's go. Number nine for me, Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray's back. Um, he'll be back healthy. Marvin is going to be a world of help to Kyler Murray in this offense. Um, another one of my guys that I wanted to add was James Conner, a consistent guy that's just – he's not going to wow you with his tape, but he's going to get touchdowns. He's going to perform at a high level. Um so I think they got a lot of good pieces around Kyler, and Kyler is going to be back healthy and doing what he does best, being a dual threat um, with an elite receiver as a rookie. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm fully in. I'm buying Cardinals offense stock. Uh, I actually think their coaching is pretty good. I think with a bad roster last year, they were in some games that I wasn't expecting them to be in. Um, I think they beat the Cowboys. That one week. Yeah, yeah, early. So I think I actually like their coaches. I don't think they have anything on defense, which means more possessions on offense. Uh so yeah, I'm buying all that. Kyler Murray stock, I'm buying Marvin stock, James Conner stock. And they even got this Michael Wilson dude um as their number two receiver that I like too. And Trey McBride at tight end. So I I would pick up all those players if they're available. Yeah, that's a good group. Yeah, they definitely got it. Like you said, that defense thing also. Some that I didn't take into account for. They are not a good defense. So, yeah. It's just, <laughs> they got <laughs> Buda Baker, and that's it, man. That's, that's all they got. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, I like that one. I like that one. Um, another one that's a uh, pretty straightforward, Pat Fryer move. Was injured for the first half of last year for the Steelers, tight end. Uh, came back and was looking good as the season went on, and he was good before that. I think he's just a good tight end. <clears throat> can block, knows how to get open, isn't like a super explosive guy, but athletic enough. And they lost Deontay Johnson, so George Pickens is the big play guy. I think Pat Fryer move is going to soak up a lot of targets, man. Uh, he's going to be he's going to be a, a weapon for them, and so for a team that I think is going to be better than people expect. I like Patrick Fryer move. Okay. All right. So what's your prediction, you know, as far as tight ends? Where is he in that uh, room? Is he, you know, uh, going to get up there with the Kittles, Andrews? Like, 
I'm not willing to say he's going to be that high. Um, I think that's the ceiling, though. I think if he has an explosive year with – it's going to take two things. I think, um, for one, he's going to have to stay healthy. The second thing is just going to be how good is the quarterback play? Because if Justin Fields or Russell Wilson comes in and plays well, yes, because I just think that they don't have a lot of other receiving options. George Pickens isn't a 10 tar- or ten catch type of guy. If he has 100 yards, it's going to be usually on like four to six catches. So Pat is going to be get- catching majority of those passes. So I think he is going to be a top 10 tight end for sure. I think if he has a, a crazy year, he's going to push up into that top five, top three category. But I think he's going to be a top 10 tight end. Okay. I like that. Can't push back at all. Like you said, you know, as long as the quarterback situation is, you know, solid, he should be yeah. good. Should be good. All right. What's, what's the last one, bro? And give me a good one, bro. Uh, well, I think this is also a. I feel like it's a sure thing. Okay. Um, I feel like the coupling of AR and Jonathan Taylor, Taylor being completely back this year, fully healthy returning to his was it his rookie year level whatever he, Taylor uh yeah. he exploded in his second year I think second year so getting back on pace to being that guy I mean he has all the tools um and as long as he's healthy he is he's gonna be top five in the running back situation he's top five yeah, I completely agree with this one. And I'm glad you brought up AR-15 because it didn't feel right to have a whole fantasy take uh, like take list and neither of us talk about um, AR. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just curious, man. You know me. I, don't, I didn't think he was good coming out of college. And I'm still not sure that he's good. But I tried from, to tell you, bro. Huh? I tried to tell you. Man. So you tried to tell me that he's good? Yeah. Try- yeah, 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 and you you might be right. Still not sold. <laughs> I think from a fantasy um, perspective, though, he's got potential. Um, and so I'm just going to be watching him to see, man. I might be wrong. Um, and after those four games he did play, I was looking pretty wrong. So uh, we're going to see, and I think that's another good uh, elite athletic running back quarterback combo. Yeah, as long as he doesn't. Go out there like he did last year and run like a running back. Yeah, he be fine. I mean, he got he has to understand like you cannot run like Cam Newton. You can't run like Josh Allen. You won't last long. Like just you got an elite arm. Protect yourself. Come on, man. Even Cam Newton couldn't run like Cam Newton. His big ass got hurt too. So, um, my last one, man. We're burning the boats. We're making our last stand, man. If this player does not hit, I'm done. I'm done. He's cooked. He's finished. He's already ruined the whole fantasy season for me before. Took him way too damn high. Took him in the third round. This is a tight end. Out of Florida, standing at 6'6", 240 pounds, Kyle Pitts. Get your ass on the field and catch the damn ball. Catch the damn ball. You got Kirk Cousins. You have Michael Penix coming. There's no more excuses, brother. I'm not taking you high, but I'm taking you. I'm, I'm, I'm drafting you. And okay. please believe I expect a 1,000 yards, and I expect at least eight touchdowns this year. Come out here and play, bro. You get you got it. I saw it your, your 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 rookie year. You had a thousand yards. You only had three touchdowns, but you had a thousand yards. I've seen you. I've seen you ball. Kyle Pitts. It's my last pick. He's gonna have a breakout year. He's gonna finally do what he's supposed to do. Ooh, man. I won't be drafted. I'm saying. <laughs> Look, I love I, man. The Falcons are my team. And I'm not saying that if he goes off, he's going to be a great choice. You know what I'm saying? Kyle Pitts, Kirk Cousins, you know, it should be a match made in heaven. But I'm just not taking that risk when there's other guys out there that I can get. 
with maybe not as much upside, but they have done more in the past couple of years or whatever. So when you say second tier guys, Pat, Kincaid, um, Pitts, McBride, um, there's probably a few other guys. Where did this Pitts fit in all of those, you know? My thing is, and I understand because he's one of those guys that like, yeah, if he hits, that's great. But how stupid you feel if he doesn't hit outweighs it. You know what I'm saying? So I feel you. But as far as where he ranks, I feel like perception of him is so bad. He's getting he's gonna get drafted at the bottom of the second tier list. And maybe even towards maybe the third tier list because everybody thinks so poorly of him. So in my my eyes, his stock is super low right now. You pick him up as a later tight end, and you might have a guy who performs. He doesn't have to be a top five guy. If he performs with Trey McBride, if he performs with those guys, I think he's going later than him. I don't think people want him. Yeah. So that's my thinking. That's my thinking. I think he's just as good as a Trey McBride, though. I saw I saw it like his rookie year, he looked good. Um and he had the, some bad quarterbacks last year, man. Dude from Cincinnati, he sucks. Um, Marcus Mariota, ass. So I think he's just as good as the Trey McBride as the Dalton Kincaid's, and I think he's going to get drafted lower than them. Yeah. He hasn't had quarterback play like this ever. So he should take off, man, and I hope he does. If you can get him late, like, that's going to be great. Now, if I see people picking him up high, like, hey, be like, all right, bro, it's better work for you. If you're choosing him as your tight end, we're the whole year. Like, he, as your first pick one, like, nah, man, I don't know about that. But late, for sure. I would say if you take the strategy of, because, you know, you have to pick, there's one position that you got to go later on. Like to build your team, you know, whether you're making a quarterback this year or receiver or tight end, it's like the way things are shuffling out in the draft. You're like, I got to pick one position to grab later. Mm -hmm. Um, I typically try not to do it with tight ends because you don't want to be getting beat by other people's tight ends all year. It's kind of annoying. Yeah. Um, I just think if you find yourself later, and haven't gotten a tight end yet, you might not have no other options. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I would I would go I would go with him over like a what's dude that's the tight end for the Texans and used to be tight end for um the Cowboys. Dalton or something? Dalton Knox, yeah. Um, yeah. Um I'll go with him over one of those guys, man. Like you give Kyle Pitts a shot. Yeah. Okay. I respect it. I hope he does play well because that means the Falcons will be doing well. Yeah. Um, you got any honorable mentions? Uh, AR-15 was going to be my honorable mention. Um, you, we kind of covered that one, though. Um, I think – I don't know how to feel about Calvin Ridley on the Titans. I don't – something about it just don't – I don't like it. Yeah. I just don't like it. Um Outside of that, though, no, nah, I think I think um, I think I'm out. I think some. I think it's a great QB year. We just talking about like what's going on. I think there's a lot of good QBs. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be taking QB super high this year because I feel like with Kyler Murray coming back, Geno Smith type of receivers, Tua. People don't like Tua, but Tua was going off last year. You know what I'm saying? Dak, from fantasy perspective, you were saying you know, like he was going crazy in fantasy. So I don't think this is the year to draft Lamar in the top five, you know what I'm saying, or the top two rounds, you know what I'm saying. I feel like you can get a guy who's going to put up the same numbers like in round five. For sure. That's, that's going to be interesting to see. Like, how does everybody draft with so much potential at the quarterback position on the board, man? Like, my strategy will not be to get quarterbacks too early. I mean, I want to get the most skilled positions 
top guys as I can, then get somebody at the quarterback position because there's going to be a lot for sure. Do you think uh, Chris McCaffrey does it again? Yeah, he going he gonna to go top again. And I feel like there's no reason not to believe it. Yeah, there ain't no reason. I think he's still in his prime. What about Justin Jefferson? You think he make a comeback? With J.J. McCarthy. Huh? J.J. McCarthy. Man, I saw an interview with Justin Jefferson saying he's, like, you know, a little scared to tear his, his hamstring again, bro. I'm kind of like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know about that one. That's scary to hear. I understand that was a scary injury, but bro, I don't know. You can't be saying that out loud to the media, bro. Period, bro. You speaking some negative stuff. That's scary. It is scary to understand. I respect his honesty. Um, that combined with him having JJ, that I just—he's a big question mark at receiver. Yeah. And, not too high on Justin Jefferson right now. I do like CD if they can get a deal done. Oh, yeah. CD will be elite again. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm, like, concerned. I feel like Alvin, if you can get Alvin late, he could be somebody that comes back this year, has a good year. And the Browns running back situation. We know Nick Chubb will not be ready for the start of the year. Ah, it's going to be sketchy, bro. Let's see. They got Jerome Ford. Oh, he's so hit or miss. Um, Dante Foreman, he had a neck injury the other day. So that's going to be interesting. Naheem Hines has never really been elite. Can't trust him. So that's going to be an interesting running back room. You made a good point bringing up Alvin Kamara. Quietly was like a top like five or six running back last year. Surely off of Derek Carr being trash and giving him 75 receptions. In points, points per possession leagues, he was racking up points off of just catching one, like two yard, like screens and dump offs. Because yeah. Derek Carr was just trash. Because he has 75 receptions and only 466 yards. Mm-hmm. So I think Alvin Kamara is a quiet little – you think he's washed on uh, running back, but, you know, he's still got fantasy value. Yeah, exactly, especially with him not being a pure runner, like him being a a guy that can catch and run. He's definitely a good pick. Max, Max, Max. Yep. So, yeah, I'm, I'm all in on if I could snag me a little Alvin Kamara. Because I'm not going to lie, the one year I won – I think I had Kamara. Bro, he went crazy that year. Bro. And he was just getting touchdown after touchdown. Like he like if you watch the game, you're like, bro, dude, who, did you you sign a deal with somebody, bro? Like how why are you getting cause it wasn't like he was, you know what I'm saying, breaking away a whole lot. He was just the whole offense was fed through him. So Yeah. That uh, I feel like he had what four or five touchdowns one game. It was like the Jamal Williams situation, just like getting all the touchdowns in the red zone, going crazy. So we'll see, man. I think he's the him and Chris Olave are still the best thing in the offense. So got to go through them guys if you want to try to win. Yeah, hopefully uh, Spencer take that job, man. Yeah. 50, 150 million, though, so we'll see. Yeah, because Derek Carr, he can't throw from here to my front door. You know, he sucks. Uh-huh. He sucks. <laughs> but neither here nor there. Uh, before we close out, I want to bring some I saw online, bro. The kids have found the word bop. Mm. They don't really know what it means. Um, one kid, one dude was saying, it's when you, it's when you, a girl that be trying to get money off of you or whatever, you be giving her money. I'm like, no, nah, that's tricking. But yeah, it's tricking. That's a, a gold digger more. So that ain't a bop. That ain't a bop. Uh, the white folks was like, no, a bop is a song. That's a hit. And I'm like, well, yeah, that is a bop, but that's not our bop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I always just to. Uh, 
Because we never have to, and that's the thing about us, like, we never, you just know a bop when you see one. You never really have to define it. But Mia was a girl that was, like, always in folks' face. And, like, she was going from dude to dude. And it was, like, you usually labeled her as a bop, not necessarily because she was, like, fucking dudes, but more because, like, she was a tease. She was trying to get attention from multiple dudes. That was more of, like, the bop to, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a little nuance with that's you know perfect. what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you know, like, because it working around from the guys, like, bro, don't. She just wants some, you know, she a bob. She just wants some attention, you know? Yep. So. Knew a lot of those, you know what I'm saying? So, yes, it's hopping around, going from guy to guy, and, you know, if you fall for it, you know, a few of our homies and fell for some of them, but uh, just know she ain't going to be there for long. She ain't gonna be there for long, bro. And don't be dumb and you know, waste more time. Cause yeah, you wasted two weeks. Just don't let it be a couple months. That'd be a nigga day. Like you really wasted some time when you spend a couple months feeding for shorty. And, you know, you could have realized after like a week or two. Yep. And she gonna be playing in your face and in somebody else's face at the same time. So it's all facts. But yeah, man, that's our little education to the young bloods for the week. <laughs> yep. We gonna have to put Bob on the screen dash what Jordan said because elite definition. Which I appreciate, it. appreciate it, man. Anything you wanna uh, close out with? Like, share, and comment, of course. Uh, run us up on YouTube. Run us up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts. Anything you wanna share before we get up out of here? Ah, uh, man, nothing to share, bro. Um, oh, look. Now, can we just brush on this situation? Can we talk about this? Did you see um, Meg the Stallion at the rally? I heard about it. I didn't watch it, but I heard some people was annoyed. Talk to me, though. Paint the picture for me. So I just saw a clip. So I'm not going to say I watched the whole thing, but I'm just going to say I saw a clip. She was playing some song. Maybe it was Body. I mean, she was about to start twerking up there at the rally. I'm just like, bro, I understand we're going for a different, we're going for the youth, but bro, that just doesn't scream. You need to be singing that song at the rally with the magnitude of the situation, Mm -hmm. the amount of diversity in the crowd. Like that's just not what we need right now. We want Kamala um to win it so that's uh, you know what me in politics bro it's it's one of them things like it feels very unserious and it feels more about entertainment um yeah. Yeah. that's why i don't like giving it my energy um we have been talking about megan more lately in a sense of like actually i had a co-worker um she's uh she's probably in her 50s she's like our parents age um Talking about like she couldn't find a lot of new music that she wanted to get into, but like it's just hard to because of things that be talking about, yada yada. And she's really trying because she has kids that are our age that be trying to put her on like some of the R and B guys, like Lucky Day and stuff like that. But we got into some of the rap girls and we're like, basically, we feel like they could talk about more. Like you're articulate, like you can put, you can use your words, and you waste it with like pussy rap all the time. Like, why can't you? Why can't you present something? It's fun. We like, I love to have fun. Sex is real. You know, we're human. We love sex. Why is that 99% of your content? Is yeah. my, like, can we turn that part of our brain off for one second and have a serious conversation? And so that'd be my thing with Meg, too, of like, you got a lot of the young women looking at you. We got enough sexy reds. I promise you we do. You're educated. You have a degree. We know you're smart. We know you're intellectual. We know you're articulate. Can we see that side of you more? You know what I'm saying? So that's what, how I feel about it. Like what you said, like time and place. Yeah, yeah, that was my only thing. So, I mean, I like, of course, we we want the youth to get involved. You know, you want that. But I just was like, I don't know, at the rally, if that's the best selection. But and you're giving, I'm not going to say excuses, but you're giving reasons like, Cause I'm I'm still not like super old, so I kind of relate in a sense of like when I have, cause 
my pops was talking to me about politics, yada, 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 telling me why I should get into it. When you come at me and you're like, yo, this is why you need to be voting. This is why you need to be watching this because this, that, and the other. And I turn on a rally and I see that. I'm going to be like, y'all look dumb sitting on like watching this, talking about these people are serious. Like, this is serious. Like, this is like what you want me to take serious when they don't take themselves serious. Like, what are we doing? And that's on both sides, Democrats, Republicans. Every time I turn on the TV and see y'all talking, y'all either lying or doing something dumb. You know what I'm saying? So it's just hard to take it serious or tell people to take it serious when I turn it on and it's not serious. So. Facts. Just so much entertainment is like when I go to the politics, you know, I don't want to see that. You know, I want to separate the entertainment side of it, you know. I don't know, man. It's between Trump just saying whatever the hell come to his mind first. And his mind. I think, you know, Harris, her campaign is going to be great. She's not going to fall into that trap. But, you know, I feel like there could have been other artists or other songs or other ways to get to the young vote than that. Uh, She's not going to directly fall in in the sense of Trump using like, um, shock value like statements and stuff like that to get people riled up but i definitely feel like because she's the ones that she she had megan there right she's the one that i think that is a misstep in a sense of like don't appeal in that way don't gimmick appeal to like a younger crowd or like because she's doing it because young black women from the ages of 18 16 even to 29 35 whatever resonate with Megan. They like her. They see her. That's why she had her there. That's, I feel like, pretty obvious. Don't, that that's a gimmicky way to try to relate to that crowd and get their votes and get them going for you. That's corny to me. You know what I'm saying? Because it's almost saying, like, um, I can't talk to you directly with my speech and get you to see why you should support me and you know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, I'm gonna get this this girl that throw her ass like you when you go to the club to show you like I'm for you. Cause Kamala don't even I'm not gonna say she don't be on that, but I bet you we can't ask Kamala to name five Meg songs. You know what I'm saying? And if we could, it's still not the point. It's still not the point of just like, I don't know. I feel like we got enough educated young black women that you can you can you can connect with on a on a better level than that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah. And so I think the rally was in Atlanta. So they had Meg, they had um, Slutty Vegan. Some people had pushback on Slutty Vegan, um, which is a black owned uh, vegan restaurant. The owner went to Clark, Atlanta. Um, yeah. I actually like her. I'm not mad at that one. She's actually an entrepreneur that I really like. Why they have pushback on her? Just because they're. Just the, the name just makes people like kind of push people away. But I mean, the food is great. Like what she's done with the culture, the menu is, is very dope to, she had a way of impacting the youth and others by creating the name and the menu choices, which is very dope. Um, so I, I love her being there and all that. Yeah, but I love her being there. Um, and that's why I'm like, it's not a like me like downing sex thing in the same capacity. If she was there, she spoke and endorsed Kamala. I'm with that. I like that. That's dope. She's somebody that I look up to. And I think what she did was dope. And Slutty Vegan was great marketing. She built a great product. Meg being there, I don't have a problem with. Meg being there twerking is kind of corny. It's, 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 it's ways to do it. It's like you said, one, one was in good taste, I feel like. Meg, if she came there and uh, actually, did she speak at least? I don't know if she spoke. Okay. So. But yeah, you know, people can't be perfect. I'm not holding it against her. Um, but you know, eh, I, I feel some people when they were like, uh, not seem like it was in bad taste. Yeah, yeah. So I gotta, I gotta watch maybe more. But you know, just from that clip, that was just my observation. It's just like. I don't know about it. But yeah, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that, man. 
Yeah, yeah, that's my thoughts, man. I think both sides be doing dumb stuff. Cause I mean, Trump be on that too. Like he'll have rappers there and be like, "These are my blacks. These are you see them? These are my blacks right here." You know, so he be on that too. And then he'll say something crazy. Like I think he said Kamala wasn't black until like recently. And that's like the funnier side of things. Like the one thing Trump got going from that I hate that he be having me laughing, bro. Because I be like, bro, shut up, bro. <laughs> Cause you know what you're doing, bro. I don't agree with you, but you you roasting right now, and so yeah, Trump be on that too. But we don't need to fight fire with fire. Let him be a goofy by himself, bro. Let him do that on his own, bro. Please, <laughs> please let him be goofy, bro. So yeah, yeah, that shit funny though. It it be funny. <laughs> yeah, but why, bro? Oh. I remember the first the first election round um, when he was doing the debates. He was debating with some white senator, bro. It might have been Ted Cruz or somebody. It's like, Ted, you got a dog wife. You, your wife, you got a dog wife. She looks like a dog, Ted. I was crying. <laughs> I was like, nigga, I know you're not up here just roasting this male wife, bro. Like, what's wrong with you, bro? Who put him in the classroom with us and he learned how to roast like this? Bro, bro I'm like, dude, <laughs> what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? <laughs> Nah, Joe got to go, man. All right, hey, okay, last thing, last thing. You watched any of the Olympics so far? You been keeping up with anything? I've been, I've been keeping up. Like I, I've been uh, keeping up with USA winning men's basketball, and then my girl Simone Biles breaking the records. Um, that's about it. What, what you got for me? Uh, I mean, I'm just ready for this track and field stuff to get going. Um, got some hot takes on that one. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Um, and there's been a few. You know, I've been watching swimming a little bit. Um, I forgot to do the name. His last name is Driscoll, but he was supposed to come in and win. You know, 100 meter fly and different things, and he didn't do well um, on these last two races. So, I mean. I'm hoping for the the next Michael Phelps. Where is he at? You know what I'm saying? Where is that next guy? This guy from France has won like four golds. He on that like Michael Phelps type of um, vibe this uh, Olympics. But like, where is the next American great male swimmer? We ain't oh, seen. I was about to say you said male because I'm like the girls is going crazy. Like the, oh, Katie, yeah. the Katie girl, she she be doing her thing. Um, I don't know. I feel like Michael Phelps was generational, bro. He was built like a little dolphin boy, you know, <laughs> boy, shark boy. So uh, I think it's, I think it's just gonna be one of the things when 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 that person arrives, he arrives and we'll know. But he probably not here yet. Um, yeah. yeah, man. So I don't know. Uh, as far as track, man. Them boys was hating on my basketball players. It wasn't them. I actually like some of them. Shout out Eric tonight and uh, shout out Shikari. Um, I hope they all do their thing. Uh, what's his name, though, that was hating on the men's basketball, bro? I forgot his name. You know what Noah I'm talking Lyle. about? Noah yeah. Lyle, Douglas. That boy. You know, champs of what? Looking ass boy. I ain't trying to. I hope the Jamaicans run that nigga off the track, bro. I hope, I'm rooting for the Jamaicans that round, bro. I'm not even going to lie to you, bro. As long as there's some people of color that win that gold, I ain't tripping when it comes to that track. Bro. <laughs> I'm not tripping, bro. I hope they dust his ass. The thing. So he. I mean, I don't think nobody going to touch him in the 200. Okay. I mean, I know Kerry and Knighton is going to be in the 200. I don't know if he's going to be able to beat them. Uh, but, yeah, 100 meters, I don't know if I got faith in Noah Lyles to win it all. You know, you got Fred Curley. You got um, Kenny, whatever they call him, Kung Fu Kenny. He had a bandana. And then this other – there's two Jamaicans that they say running the elite right now. And 100 is not no allows race. So it's going to be interesting to see. And I'm hoping he don't gas himself for the 200 because he's trying to run the 100. Oh, my Jamaican brothers. Get them out of here. Yeah. Yeah, man. Get them out of here. Yeah. Yeah, he was disrespectful, bro. He was. Like, bro. Like, first of all, you, like, why are you hating on your American brothers, man? 
Like what well, what possessed you? Who 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 whose basketball preseason game was your girl at, bro? Cause that's what it sounds like, bro. <laughs> like you want more folks to watch track and field, which is fair. Like track and field's a dope sport. I wish it was more of a mainstream sport. It's dope. And you tough. You good, you good at what you do, bro. But like why why did you see that and be like, world champs of what? And then you sounded like a little nerd saying it, bro. So yeah. I don't know, man. I need to let it go. Stop being petty. But, man, that wasn't cool, bro. We we supposed to be showing love. And it wasn't even true, bro. It wasn't even like, bro, if you watch basketball, it's world champs because all the best players in the world play in the NBA. Exactly. All play in the NBA, bro. If we had, like, a club tournament, the Denver Nuggets that year was the champs. If we had them play any club team in the world, they was going to dust them, boys. Yeah. Like, you got – like, I'm just looking at the Olympics right now, and I'm – just seeing, like, you know, you got Jokic in Siberia. You got Canada with Shea, Murray. They loaded. Um, yeah. Like, but they're all NBA players is the top players on all those teams, bro. So it's like, all right, man. If that's if that's the hill you want to die on, brother, but uh, more power to you. I will be rooting for Aaron, T- Aaron Knight and Fred Curley and them Jamaican boys. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Yes, sir. So yeah, that's that's it, man. Just uh, I'm about to be watching this. Uh, the man's play Puerto Rico right now. Okay. Yeah, Puerto Rico. They sneaky. They sneaky. Got to watch them. They mm. sneak. I think we'll beat them. Of course, we got to Our team is stacked. I'm not gonna lie. So watching the USA basketball team, we cheating having them beat on the team. So, I'm gonna call it what it is cheat. But low key and B really ain't even being that impactful right now. That's my he's not because he doesn't really fit the team. And Steve Kerr, that's another thing. His ass need to just put in B coming off the bench because he doesn't really fit the style. He's slow. We trying to get up court. He's slow. It doesn't really work. Um, and that's what we get for getting him anyway. Because I'm glad we kept him away from France. I'm not gonna lie, because France would be big as hell if they had him win B. And Rudy Gobert. I'm not gonna lie. That'd be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh because he's not French either. He's from Africa. He's Cameroon, Cameroonian. But um our team is stacked, man. Like this is the best team I've ever seen. Like if you say like the best 12 man roster I've ever seen, this might be it, bro. Dream team included. It's- what about what about you know that redeem team in 08 though, bro? That was right there with the Redeem team was cold. So that's the probably the three best basketball teams other than some all-star teams um, I've ever seen is the Dream team, the Redeem team, and this team. Um, the Redeem team had a prime Kobe, prime D-Wade, prime Carmelo, prime CP3. Um, LeBron. LeBron, of course. Damn, I, saw, I, I said so many great players. I forgot LeBron James. So, no. I want to wait. Vince Carter, KG. I mean, before I crown this team, I want to wait and see them win gold. You know, and get it done. Um, but we'll, we'll, you know, we'll spin the block back and see where they stack up against some of them great teams. But it's a, it's a stack. They got Bam, AD, and Embiid at center. They got Ann Edwards, Kevin Durant, Jason Tatum, Devin Booker, like Steph Curry. Kevin Durant is on the bench right now, bro. Tyrese Halliburton ain't getting no tick. He ain't getting no clock. So yep. that's that's to show you how good this team is. Mm-hmm. This team is elite. So yeah. yeah. Last yeah. one. How you feel about football coming to the Olympics? Black football. Uh, that's just gonna be interesting to see who gets to play. Like, is it gonna be our NFL players going to play? I don't think they should. I think we should do college players. Mm, that would be pretty cool. Mm, yeah, I would, I would like to see how it plays out. Maybe I don't think next Olympics. Next Olympics would be dope. I think because it takes other t- it takes other countries years to get caught up because people forget um, the Dream Team was the first team of professional NBA players to compete in the Olympics. Before that, it was always college players. Mm. So I I think it's too early to have NFL players play in the Olympics, only because it just wouldn't be interesting. 
I think it should be college players playing against pros from other countries because they they're just so fresh to football. Like there's not really a big football pipeline in other countries. Yeah. So I think it would just be more interesting in that sense. Gotcha. Yep. That is going to be interesting. It's like going to be that same. We're going to be talking 30 years from now. Like, no, nah, this team was the best team ever. Yeah. Knowing they weren't playing the best people in the world at the time. Like, that's how I feel about the dream team. Like, they was cold, but they weren't playing. The talent hadn't caught up, you know. Scrubs. <laughs> The boys was bad though. I'm not gonna take that away from them. That was yeah. some bad boys. That boy Larry Bird. All of them. I'm not gonna take that away from them. It was it was the truth. For sure. All right, yeah. That's all I got though. We ended up doing a whole nother episode with that. For real. We did, man. But yeah, y'all, y'all still like, share, and comment once again. And man, that's it, man. All in audio, all in, all out. All out, baby. Oh, let me stop it. There we go.